Hi, thank you all again for attending the first annual conference of the American Baseball Biomechanics Society. My name is John Slowick, and I'm going to talk about optical motion capture systems and their use in baseball. So where does optical motion capture have its origins? Well, in the late 19th century, you have the first photographic studies of motion. Then in the early 20th century, a technique called rotoscoping was developed to help ensure animated characters move in a realistic manner. Later, Edgerton worked with flash photography and stroboscope, finding a way to get a clear, non-blurry image of a brief instant in time. The 1970s to the 1990s were a time of transformation for optical motion capture and biomechanics. 2D analyses of video with manual digitization gave way to 3D reconstruction with a greatly increased level of automation. The late 70s and the 80s saw a concerted effort among the US Olympic Committee to capture high-speed video of its athletes in the hopes of analyzing them and improving their performance. Meanwhile, early research in baseball biomechanics was ongoing and hospitals were beginning to perform clinical gait assessments using 3D motion capture technology. More recent innovation in motion capture has been driven by the entertainment industry, as we now have widespread use in both movies and video games. So what is the current state of optical motion capture? Typically, markers are placed on bony landmarks all over the body, whether they are passive or active markers. A multi-camera setup then sees light from them and determines their location in 3D space. Current accuracy levels of these systems are below one millimeter of error, and you commonly hear these systems described as the gold standard in motion capture. Now here's a look at a typical evaluation workflow. Prior to an athlete arriving, you should calibrate the cameras so that they know their location relative to the origin, capture volume, and other cameras. After the athlete is markered up, you record a static trial that is used to scale or calibrate a stick figure model that defines different body segments. The player can then proceed to warm up. When ready, the athlete completes his motion trials within the camera volume, and the system gives us trajectories of the marker's X, Y, Z locations throughout the entire pitch, or whatever other motion you want to analyze. Joint center trajectories are calculated based on the marker trajectories, and then joint angles are calculated using inverse kinematics. Inverse dynamics is typically used to determine joint kinetics as well. If you were so inclined, you could even develop detailed skeletal or musculoskeletal models that can be used to look at things such as power flow, induced accelerations, and even individual muscle forces. In addition to time series data, we typically also highlight key time points. Slow motion video and snapshots can help the athletes visualize the numbers. And his mechanics can then be compared to other athletes as well as to himself, if he had a previous evaluation or through multiple pitch types. Furthermore, if you enroll the pitcher in a research study, you might combine his data with other pitchers to analyze and answer a particular research question. So what are some common issues that a biomechanist may encounter with marker-based motion capture? First, proper marker placement is critical, as both marker placement and model definitions can affect biomechanical calculations. Another large issue is occlusion, or basically the camera losing sight of a marker and not knowing its location for select frames of data. This can be reduced by optimizing the placement and number of cameras in the system. Furthermore, there are mathematical techniques in most motion capture software that can be used to fill gaps in data, but you do need a detailed understanding of the motion you have captured in order to make sure that you do not fill the gaps incorrectly. Another common issue is misidentification of markers. You may see markers swapping, especially when their trajectories cross paths. We often see this with the markers on the throwing wrist, and markers may fall off during the collection. So despite much of the tough work being automated now, it can still require some double checking and cleanup. Okay, so we've walked through how to collect motion capture data, but we actually skipped over the reasons to do so. Numerous research studies have shown that biomechanics influence both injury risk and performance. And the key variables may be difficult or near impossible to see with the naked eye. Okay, but once we are aware of potential 
harmful biomechanics, can they be changed? Well, my colleagues at ASMI recently performed a study exploring just that. Baseball pitchers were evaluated twice, about one year apart. And mechanics flaws were identified at the first evaluation. The pitchers or their coaches were provided with the finding. However, it should be noted that no further follow-up was performed between visits to ensure that the pitcher attempted to change his mechanics. The decision whether to act on the recommendations is completely up to them. Still, overall at the, first, at the second visit, about one half of all flaws have been fixed. It also appeared as though it's easier to fix flaws in earlier phases of the pitch, as more were fixed near the time of foot contact than near the time of ball release. Okay, so now moving back to the present state of things. The overall look and workflow of optical motion capture actually hasn't changed a ton in the last 10 to 15 years, but that does not mean that there have not been improvements. We now have better cameras and outdoor collection is no longer difficult as it once was. We have faster computers that can enable more real-time calculations. And the software has been upgraded significantly as well. There is much more automation with less post-processing needed. In addition, we've even optimized things like the type of tape to use to make sure that the markers do not fall off during a collection. And as technology has improved, high quality, lower cost marker-based camera systems have become available. So what are some current limitations of this technology and its implementations? Well, you either have to find a baseball biomechanics lab or build your own. And you do need a certain level of expertise and training to ensure good data, as it is important to fully understand your equipment and any subsequent calculations that you may make based on the market position data. Fortunately, there's a wave of interest in biomechanics. And part of ABBS's mission is to help grow this community and help the baseball biomechanists flourish. Still, the technology is not cheap, so I strongly recommend that you first find your biomechanist and then have them help uh, purchase and select your equipment. Another limitation right now is that you don't often have frequent data collections from the same picture. Even when a club has its own lab, they don't want to disrupt training and routines. While over the years, ASMI has helped 10 Cy Young Award, uh, Cy Young Award winning pitchers, frankly, most were not at the peak of their careers at the time of the collection. Many were top prospects, while a few others were looking for a rejuvenation at the end of their career. A final limitation is that a game situation cannot be perfectly reproduced. With our pitchers, they are throwing in only their sliding shorts, and you cannot reproduce the adrenaline of the game being on the line. Typically, we see ball velocities of about two to seven miles per hour slower than in games. Okay, so what's the future? Well, what if we could remove those markers? We are really excited about this present moment in time. <clears throat> there have really been various companies trying to develop markerless motion capture capabilities for the past decade. But frankly, early on, when we took a look at their systems and their data, there were critical issues. For instance, at first, none could achieve anywhere near the frame rate necessary to capture baseball pitching. But the top companies have been diligently at work, improving the product, and we are really excited about the present moment and the growth that we expect to see in this arena in the near future. There has been a recent influx of companies, but among the bigger players, the currently available systems have a lot of similarities in their base concepts, overall design, and workflow. While there are differences in the user interface, performance, and data visualization ca capabilities, I'm not going to discuss those distinctions in detail here. Fortunately, the workflow of markerless motion capture systems is remarkably similar to existing marker-based systems. You still calibrate the cameras and set the system origin. You still do some calibration of the base model to make it subject-specific to enable better capture. While previous marker-based systems rely on markers for segment and joint definitions, these new markerless systems create them based on silhouettes or shading or color contrast between 3D voxels, as well as relying on model constraints. The next step in this workflow is to record the athletic motions. Here, the systems tend to calculate the joint center trajectories as the model follows along live with live, uh, follows along with the live images. You can do additional reprocessing or post-processing, but the real-time processing works surprisingly well. Computers are just faster and more powerful than when marker-based systems were first developed. 
And these new systems tend to utilize clever algorithms as well uh, in order to help obtain quick and accurate capture. Okay. So what are the potential applications for this new technology? Many of these systems have already been installed in training facilities. This enables biomechanists to compare a large quantity of pictures, but also study longitudinal changes within each picture. Some systems have been installed in stadiums. With proper placement in lenses, the cameras can work remarkably well over extremely long distances. It may thus be possible to even notice biomechanical changes in a picture within a game. While we already know many factors that lead to injury or reduced performance, this technology will open up many new avenues of study. I'm very excited at the potential for some uh, analyses that are specifically tailored to individual players. Within subject variability in baseball pitching biomechanics is very small compared to differences between pitchers. We recently, we recently performed a study on the influence of ball velocity on elbow varus torque, and that was a key finding. While the relationship was weak across pitchers, it was extremely strong within an individual pitcher. I firmly believe that subject-specific analyses are going to be a key component in the future of sports biomechanics. Okay, so this technology is exciting, but as biomechanists, we can't put the cart before the horse, just as with any technology we utilize. It's very important to fully understand these systems before we fully trust the output of data. Multiple validation studies are ongoing, but until extensive validation studies are published, the biomechanists must be ready to determine their own level of confidence in the various outputs. What types of variables does the system calculate most accurately, and which ones does it struggle with? Even if there are differences, are the differences predictable and consistent across pitchers, within pitchers? Matching the results from a more established technology is necessary for many applications. And despite these struggles, Remember that new technology development is an iterative process. Things should only get better and better. Also, because many of the improvements in, uh, will be in the software, implementation of the improvements theoretically should not require new hardware. Considering all of this, as well as the value of having a head start on your competition, it should not be surprising to witness the current and future growth in the use of markerless motion capture technologies in Major League Baseball. Okay. So if we are currently witnessing the rapid growth of multi-camera markerless motion capture, what does the future look like a little further out? Well, our mobile phones have greater computing power than room-sized computers did long ago. And the cameras within them keep on getting better and better as well. With better algorithms and lots of training, would it be possible to do high quality biomechanical evaluations with video from a single mobile phone camera? I don't know, but it sure is exciting to think about. Future technology could potentially make at least bare bones evaluations widespread at even the youth levels. Our mission at ASMI is to improve the understanding, prevention, and treatment of sports-related injuries through research and education. So as exciting as the present moment is in baseball biomechanics, I am even more excited for the future. Thank you very much for the time and attention, and I really hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.